We interrupt this program to bring you further details on the shooting of President Kennedy. After the shots were fired and the president was seen to slump over and Governor Connolly was hit, the motorcade sped on toward the hospital. It took them perhaps five minutes to reach the ambulance entrance of the hospitals. Reporters there say the president was lying flat on his face in the car. A man and woman were seen scrambling on the upper level of a walkway overlooking the underpass from which they believe the shots were fired. Lawrence O'Brien, who is the presidential aide, said he had no information on whether the president still was alive. There are fears that perhaps the shots might have been fatal. There are no details as yet. Mrs. Kennedy, who cried out when the shots were fired, blood was seen on the president's face, was weeping and trying to hold up her husband's head, even when reporters first reached the car. Governor Connolly of Texas was wounded. He received shots about the body. He, too, fell over. He also was raced to the same hospital. President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, Texas. He was shot while he was touring town with Governor Connolly in the famous bubble car. The bubble was down. Both Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly were in the car with them. Three shots rang out and the president slumped forward and Governor Connolly remained seated upright. So far, the latest word is that they are still alive. Mrs. Kennedy, as soon as the president stumped forward, she grabbed him, she cradled him in her arms, and she said, oh no, and tried to hold up his head. Then the car was quickly taken out of line and sped to the hospital. The president and the governor were rushed to Parkland Hospital near Dallas, the Dallas trademark, where uh, Mr. Kennedy was to have made a speech. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, here is a late reassuring uh, note from uh, Dallas. Mr. K uh, President yeah. Kennedy, according to a member of his staff, is still alive. And now here is a report from Ron Cochran. Thank you very much, Don. I had just returned from lunch where I was called and informed of the uh, tragedy involving President Kennedy. I'm sure that millions of uh, Americans... You can see there's a little confusion here in our studio. I have just returned uh, from lunch. I was called at a restaurant here in New York advised of the tragedy involving President Kennedy. He was, as you probably know by now, shot along with the governor of Texas in a motorcade in Dallas, Texas, by unknown assailants. So far as we know at the present time, they have not been captured. Now, I'm going to start at the beginning and give you as much information as we have, which unfortunately at this time is not very much. <clears throat> President Kennedy has been shot, as I said, by an unknown assassin in Dallas. He's in a Dallas hospital. The latest unconfirmed report from the emergency room is that he is still alive. Texas Governor John Connolly also was hit by the bullets, probably fired by the same gun. We do not know, however, whether it was one bullet or two or more. The two men were riding together in a parade through downtown Dallas. They were in the president's open limousine and were cut down, apparently, simultaneously, possibly by the same bullet. The president's wife was beside him in the car, and she fell on her knees beside him at the time. Texas Governor John Connolly also was shot. It isn't known yet whether he is still alive. When the president was shot, Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed him and said, oh no. The Secret Service ordered the motorcade to speed on to nearby Parkland Hospital. Associated Press reporter Jack Bell says the president and Connolly were shot as the motorcade entered a triple underpass which leads to the Stemmons Freeway in Dallas. Bell said that a man and woman were scrambling on the upper level of a walkway overlooking the underpass. Mrs. Kennedy was weeping and trying to hold up her hus husband's head when reporters reached the car. The president apparently was shot in the head. He fell face down in the back seat of the car. Blood was on his head. Governor Connolly remained half-seated, slumped to the left, and there was blood on his face and forehead. 
In Washington, the White House said it had no information beyond the reports they had received from newsmen at the scene. Both the president and Connolly were rushed to the Parkland Hospital. It's located near the Dallas Trademark, where the president was to have made a speech. Even at high speed, it took nearly five minutes to get the car uh, to the uh, ambulance entrance of the hospital. Representative Albert Thomas of Texas says that he's been informed that both President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas are still alive. That was a half hour ago. Do you have Ed Silverman? Are you in contact with our uh, reporter in Dallas? I uh, just spoke with Bill Lord a moment ago, Ron. He is uh, there with the sheriff. Uh, he merely confirms uh, that uh, both Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly have uh, uh, escaped uninjured. They are safe. There are no further details as yet on the condition of the president or the governor. And uh, he has uh, just left the phone for a moment to check uh, with the sheriff on the possibility of the capture of uh, the assailants. Now, uh, just to inform myself, is Bill Lord at the hospital? Uh, he is uh, across the street from the hospital uh, with a setup uh, that the sheriff uh, has uh, put into effect there. Well, evidently they are getting things uh, organized to the best of their ability so that perhaps uh, very soon we'll be getting uh, more comprehensive information. Uh, we certainly hope so. In a condition like this, there's a great deal of confusion uh, when things uh, first are getting on the way. Uh, I'm sure they're getting squared away down there. And as soon as anything fresh comes in, we'll uh, get it right to you, Ron. We have this word here from the Associated Press. President Kennedy was given blood transfusions today at Parkland Hospital in an effort to save his life after he and Governor John Connolly uh, were shot in the assassination attempt. Now we'll go through some of the other uh, uh, wire service information which has reached us here. Representative Albert Thomas of Texas said that he was informed that President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly are both still alive. That was uh, more than a half hour ago. We had some information regarding the uh, persons who possibly uh, might have fired the shots that uh, struck the uh, president and the governor. It says, uh, according to the uh, United Press International Service, at the top of a hill, a man and a woman appeared huddled on the ground. In the turmoil, it was impossible to determine at once whether the Secret Service and Dallas police returned the gunfire that struck down uh, Kennedy and Connolly. It was also difficult to determine immediately whether the First Lady and Mrs. Connolly were injured. Both women were crouched down over the inert forms of their husbands as the big car raced toward the hospital. Mrs. Kennedy was on her knees on the floor of the rear seat with her head toward the president. The Senate in Washington has recessed. It said it was doing so pending developments in the shooting of President Kennedy in Dallas. Now this is the latest picture received taken just before the assassination attempt of the president and his wife as they rode in the Dallas motorcade. When he was hit, Mr. Kennedy was standing up. He fell back over the seat of the car, and Mrs. Kennedy immediately bent over him, cradled his head in her arms. Her cry of, oh no, oh my God, was the first realization of the reporters on the scene what had happened. We'll show you more pictures as we receive them. These pictures come into uh, our ABC News headquarters here in New York by uh, wire, and we'll undoubtedly be receiving other pictures from time to time. The photograph was taken as Mr. Kennedy applauded when his wife was introduced at a Chamber of Commerce breakfast in Dallas this morning. That's the most recent picture that we have. This was this morning at a Chamber of Commerce uh, breakfast in Dallas. That's the picture that you see now. Uh, now simply to recap, the and we're going to stay on the air here in an emergency circumstance, as I'm sure you can see. Uh, everybody poured into the studio uh, the minute that the uh, that word came. We're going to uh, keep the air here to uh, bring you any late news as it arrives. Although Dallas is regarded as a center of strong political opposition to President Kennedy, and of course it was only recently that uh, you'll recall that Ambassador Adlai Stevenson uh, was uh, more or less personally attacked by a, a group of uh, radical rightists in Dallas after he had uh, addressed a group there. 
the heavy uh, street crowds between Love Field Airport and the scene of the shooting apparently was overwhelmingly friendly. There were numerous welcome Kennedy signs, but a few were anti-Kennedy. Uh, Ron, excuse me for interrupting, about the only thing that's fresh that uh, Bill Lauren has to report, he is with the sheriff there. They are now interrogating uh, some six witnesses uh, to the shooting. Uh, there's been no announcement made as, uh, as to the details, but the sheriff is speaking to six people who claim to have seen the shooting. He has them inside. Uh, just a moment, Bill's coming. There are, 12, there are now 12 eyewitnesses, but no uh, indication as to uh, who might have done it. Is that right, uh, Bill Lord? No, no. Well, indication, uh, uh, some of the uh, witnesses have indicated that, uh, as to a description of the man, that he is a white male about 30 years old. That's about the only thing they have to go on now, Ron. Well, now, this is, uh, is this the man that they are reasonably sure fired the shots, or do you know that? Yeah, yes, the witnesses say that they saw a white male, approximately age 30, in police parlance, uh, fire the shots. But there have been no details. They're still being interrogated. We will, we will have to find out, of course, uh, how far away this man was and what position he had uh, for firing the shot. It's most unusual, incidentally, that such a thing could happen because of the uh, unusually tight security measures that are ordinarily taken by the uh, Secret Service who guard the president. And uh, normally, any vantage point, a rooftop, and uh, windows which command uh, a parade route are carefully scrutinized and carefully guarded and men are usually posted on rooftops along a parade route uh, particularly if there is any any reason at all to suppose that there might be someone in the area who uh, would have uh, uh, such ideas as assassination in his mind regarding the president these precautions of course are taken by the secret service for all presidents as they have been for many years. Just to explain what we are attempting to do here, we, uh, of course, because of the emergency circumstances, cannot take you by picture directly to Dallas at the present time. We are uh, setting up facilities to do that and will as quickly as possible, but it is technically impossible to do so right at this present time. Before very much more time uh, elapses, however, we hope to be able to take you directly to Dallas for some on-the-scenes reports from there. In the meantime, we will have to uh, maintain contact with our reporters there by telephone and by whatever other means to bring you the news as it comes through. We have further word here that throughout the parade, the president, before the shooting, was confronted with the evidence of anti-administration feeling in Dallas. Now we have word that we can switch directly to Dallas. We take you now to Dallas, and I'm not sure who your reporter will be. You're talking. We're showing the picture. We're going to show it to you now. I can't see the monitor. We're going to get you. Just take the picture, Jimmy. This is, this is from Dallas, Texas. Come on, Freddie. Come on. Let's go. Hey, get the studio here. Have I got audio here? Yes, you're on. You're on the air. I understand that I am still on the air. I was not quite sure whether uh, you could hear uh, my voice. But uh, you are now receiving a picture directly from uh, Dallas. I'm not sure what you're seeing there. This is one of the speakers at the... Uh, at a meeting where the president appeared this morning. We are, of course, operating at the present moment under extreme emergency conditions, and we must apologize for not being able to, at this time, bring you uh, direct pictures of the scene of the motorcade where the incident occurred. That, of course, will be forthcoming later. It's a matter of uh, sufficient time elapsing so that uh, the film can be processed.
and grant unto us wisdom, strength, courage, to live in keeping with thy law, and to live as free men. Amen. Dr. Dickinson, the pastor of one of the uh, largest Methodist congregations in the world, the word was not given to the crowd, but we understand that the president is dead. This we do not have an absolute confirmation on, but uh, this is the word that we have. As we said a few minutes ago, uh, he apparently died in the operating room at Parkland Hospital, which is the city county emergency hospital here, located about a mile and a half from this building. The president uh, and his party have been in Texas now since yesterday. They arrived in San Antonio, then to Houston, then to Fort Worth last night. He walked into a big crowd of some six to 8,000 this morning in a parking lot in downtown Fort Worth. The fears here were that had the president had a problem in Dallas, it would have been at the airport upon his arrival. But nothing went wrong there. There were some pickets, there were some demonstrators, but the president in his charming manner moved into the crowd with his wife by his side and greeted and shook hands for all uh, quite some time uh, there at the airport. Then. And again, we go back to this business of here, we have been forecasting rain in Dallas for the last couple of days, and this morning was one of those dreary mornings. There was fog, there was rain, the clouds hung low, and the weathermen had the uh, forecast that this would hold through this afternoon. But then as the morning wore on, the uh, clouds broke away, and when the president's big jet sat down right on schedule at 25 minutes before the noon hour, central time, the sun was bright, the crowds were out, the bubble plexiglass cover for the president's limousine was put away, and the president and his wife and the governor of the state of Texas rode in the open car. All went well past the airport, down Mockingbird Lane to Lemon, down uh, Lemon Avenue to Turtle Creek, Turtle Creek on into Cedar Springs, Cedar Springs down to Harwood, the crowds out to see the president, then down to Main Street, up Main, and just as the presidential motorcade started to enter the triple underpass at Houston Street, shots rang out. The president, as we have it now, mortally wounded, the governor of Texas, John Connolly, who served as Secretary of the Navy in Mr. Kennedy's cabinet, when Mr. Kennedy first assumed the high office, is wounded, he was shot in the chest. A Secret Service agent whose job it was, as with his others, uh, fellow agents, to guard the life of the president, killed instantly. Three shots fired and three people hit. The president apparently dead, the governor of Texas wounded, we don't know how seriously, a Secret Service agent killed on the spot. This is not confirmed, the death of the president. We have it on what would normally be good authority. But until the word officially comes, there is no way to know. The crowds have emptied now, and this big market hall that was to have been the site of a festive day for the president, for his wife, and the vice president, and his wife, and the governor, and his wife, and the many Texas congressmen, now being emptied, and most of the meals left untouched. There had been a rhubarb here for a couple of weeks over who would sit at the head table. And finally, at the last minute, a protocol expert was called in, and the head table seating arrangement became final as of this morning. A uh, rift has existed for a long time with the Democratic Party in Texas, and this rift the Democrats will tell you whether they be conservatives or loyalists or liberals or moderates or whatever faction of the Democratic Party they belong to in Texas. They all say that this is uh, just an inter-party fight and we can all get together when the president comes to town. Well, finally they did get together. The big uh, bone of contention had been whether or not Senator Ralph Yarbrough, who is considered in, certainly the liberal wing of the party, would be seated at the head table. He does not get along too well with Vice President Johnson or with Governor Connolly. 
The word was that last night uh, the uh, senator refused to ride in the motorcade in the same car with Vice President Johnson. Uh, but today, all was to have been pretty much peaches and cream, uh, as it were. Uh, they were all going to sit at the head table and break bread together on this Friday, the 22nd of November. And then, before they could ever reach this market hall, the word is that the president has been killed, that one of his agents is dead, and the governor of Texas is wounded. From the trademark in Dallas, Texas, this is Eddie Barker. Go ahead, Ron, talk. You heard that report direct from Dallas, Texas. To repeat what was said earlier in the report from Dallas, there is a report that the president has died. However, we must and uh, must emphasize that this report has so far been unconfirmed. And that report came in a few minutes ago and uh, has not been confirmed thus far. And so we are inclined to disbelieve it. We certainly hope, of course, that it is not true. The president was given the last holy rites of the Roman Catholic Church. A Catholic priest who helped perform the last rites said he did not believe the president was dead at the time. Excuse the sacrament was administered uh, shortly before 1 o'clock. Yes, Bill Lord Ed Silverman. Bill Lord briefly reported from the sheriff's office in Dallas, and he confirms that the sheriff's office say that there were four shots fired, that a Secret Service agent was killed, which indicates the deadly accuracy of these shots. Four uh, shots fired, one uh, agent killed, and both the president and uh, Governor Connolly fell by them. Either they were awfully close or using uh, rifles, it would seem. It has been confirmed that the Secret Service agent yes, was killed. Yes, by the Sheriff's Office in Dallas. And there's also an indication that a young man was taken into custody uh, by the uh, Sheriff's Office before questioning. He is a suspect. We have a report that uh, an assistant to Governor Connolly said he talked to the governor in the hospital operating room, where, which is the same operating room uh, apparently where the president was taken. He said the governor was shot just below the shoulder blade in the back. He said he asked Connolly how it happened, and he said, I don't know, I guess from the back they got the president too. Mrs. Lyndon Johnson said after a visit to the emergency operating room that the vice president is fine. She was taken back into another first floor room where Johnson originally had gone, asked if her husband also had been wounded. She shook her head negatively. She said he had not been. Secret Service men pushed reporters away and permitted no more questions. Of course, you can imagine the confusion, the emergency circumstances, uh, the confusion that must exist around that hospital. I'm receiving word now. We have, re we have received word that two priests who were with the president have reported that the president is dead. Now here, here again, we must, we must uh, emphasize that this is not an official announcement. It has not been announced by the White House or anyone in the official party traveling with the president. But uh, the Associated Press quotes two priests who were with the president stating that he died from the bullet wounds or wound inflicted upon him by a sniper. We have to assume that it was a sniper who fired from a considerable distance. The president was given the last rites of the Roman Catholic Church at about one o'clock uh, Dallas time. And at that time, the first reports were that the president was still alive. However, uh, this latest word says that uh, the priests were under the impression the president was dead at the time the last rites were administered. Uh, we, of course, are going to keep the air here, and we will bring you whatever reports come in as they come in from uh, the wire services, from our reporters on the scene, and from Washington and Dallas directly. We will be going to uh, Washington before long for a direct report from there. Ed Silverman is sitting here beside me. He has a telephone uh, to Dallas and is in touch with uh, our reporter Bill Lord, who is at the hospital and has been uh, in touch with people at the scene. Ed, is there anything uh, new there? No, there is nothing uh, new, uh, Ron. Uh, Bill left the phone to check with the sheriff's office. He did confirm the uh, death of the Secret uh, Service agent, the fact that at least a dozen eyewitnesses have been uh, brought in for interrogation, and the fact that one suspect has been picked up. 
He is in there being questioned now. There have been no details. Everyone is being very close-mouthed in the sheriff's office. And, of course, there is a great deal of rumor, uh, Bill mentioned, a great deal of rumor, as is uh, understandable at a time like this. So we would hesitate to pass any of that along. We'll stick strictly with the facts as we get them. Thank you, Ed Silverman. Now, we're receiving a, uh, a report here. The United Press reports... Uh, the United Press reports that the president died at 1.35. That would be 1.35 Eastern Time, I presume. Uh, that would have been uh, about uh, 1.35 Central Time. That was only about two minutes ago. Now, that, again, is a, a United Press International uh, report. It is not attributed. We do not know uh, whether that is an official announcement by uh, anyone in the Kennedy party. We have another photograph of Mr. Kennedy in the motorcade, which was taken minutes before the assassination attempt. This is a uh, still photograph of the president in the motorcade. You see he's riding in an open car, and we're informed that the time that the shot struck him, he was standing in that car. Uh, unfortunately, apparently making a good target for uh, the sniper who was hiding somewhere and may have fired from a considerable distance, uh, probably with a high-powered rifle, considering the accuracy with which he shot. And uh, also the fact that uh, one of the Secret Service agents was killed. The Secret Service agents normally walk directly beside the car on either side. We do not see any in this photograph, but usually uh, two or three Secret Service agents will walk on either side of the car uh, so that they are there to uh, spot any, anyone who looks like a, a troublemaker. Government sources now confirm we have this from Washington. Government sources now confirm that President Kennedy is dead. So that apparently is the final word and an incredible event that I am sure no one except the assassin himself could have possibly imagined would occur on this day. The president and uh, Mrs. Kennedy had gone to Texas uh, in a speaking tour which was to be, in effect, uh, more or less the beginning of the president's 1964 campaign. It was uh, a, a trip which, in which it had been hoped he would bring the uh, various dissident forces in the Democratic Party in Texas together and uh, heal up some of the political wounds that had existed there. Instead, it ended in tragedy with the president's death. We have no word as to the condition of Governor Connolly although, uh, of Texas, who was also uh, shot, although uh, evidently he was not uh, as seriously wounded and uh, apparently is still alive. The president was shot in the head. Ed Silverman, do you have further words? There is a report uh, from Dallas, one of the TV newsmen uh, covering the uh, motorcade, says that he uh, looked up uh, just after the shot was fired and saw a rifle being withdrawn from the fifth or sixth floor window of a nearby building. So apparently it was uh, caused by rifle fire. Here's another well, report, uh, Ron, which just came in. This, this one says Senator Ralph Yarborough of Texas, a Democrat, talking only a few minutes before... We are now going to uh, bring you an audio report, that is a voice report, from reporter uh, Bill Lord in Dallas. Come in, Bill Lord. Hello, Bill Lord, are you there? Come in, please, Bill Lord. Well, uh, Bill was at the other end of this phone a moment ago. He uh, has been at the sheriff's office. Apparently, he had to leave the phone for some urgent announcement. Uh, we had hoped to bring him to you now, but apparently, uh, Bill Lord has left us. Uh, we will bring you, him to you as soon as he comes back to the phone. Now back to you, Ron. Thank you, uh, Ed. Senator Ralph Yarborough of Texas, talking only a few minutes before to newsmen, collapsed in sobs as he told of uh, witnessing the slaying of the president. Senator Yarborough said he was in the third car behind the president. He said, it seemed to me that at least two of the shots came from our right rear. I cannot say about the third. It seems uh, impossible that there could have been more than one sniper. But uh, it seemed impossible to me that there could be even one, considering the uh, security precautions that are usually taken. To uh, 
uh, recapitulate some of the information which we've already given you in case you may be joining us late. President Kennedy is dead. He died in a hospital after being cut down by an assassin's bullet while his motorcade was moving along on the outskirts of Dallas, Texas. Texas Governor John Connolly also was shot, but there is no word up to this time on his fate. There was a report that Vice President Johnson also had been wounded, but this was denied by Mrs. Johnson. First word of the president's death came from two priests as they left Parkland Hospital's emergency ward where the president was taken. Their announcement brought audible sobs from a crowd of scores of newsmen and other citizens. The confirmation of the president's death came quickly then, uh, shortly after that, from Washington. There is no longer any doubt the president is dead. You're on the air. You're on network feed. We are feeding now. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, from WFA TV in Dallas, what you're about to see is the first eyewitness report that we could line up. This program went on the air in Dallas, Texas, approximately 10 minutes after the president was shot. Then after that, we will have film that is completely unedited that was made, and we, we and frankly, we do not know what's on the film. So right now, let's run the videotape of the program this morning with the eyewitness. Let's go. About 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Let me quote to you this. And I'll, you'll excuse me if I am out of breath. A bulletin. This is from the United Press from Dallas. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired. The president, his limp body carried in the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, has rushed to Parkland Hospital. Uh, and if you'll excuse me if I give some directions and we talk about what we're going to do here for the next few minutes. But, Bobby, let's tape this, if you please, particularly the interview with the eyewitness people. It is being taped good. Here's a uh, piece of copy that was rushed to, to me and was torn off from the United Press in Dallas. President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, has been shot in Dallas, Texas. He was shot as a motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed the president. She cried, oh, no, as the motorcade sped on. An Associated Press photographer, James Algins, 8-L-T-G-E-N-S, reports he saw blood on the president's head. The AP man said he heard two shots but thought someone was shooting fireworks until he saw the blood on the president. He also said he saw no one with a gun. Uh, we were awfully close, Jerry Haynes, as you know, and Mr. Peppermint, we were awfully close to being an eyewitness. We were standing on Houston Street between Maine and the next street over. Jerry, come in, would you please? Uh, and the next street over, we watched the president come by and gave him the applaud that is due the office of the president of the United States. And as he turned left, two or three shots rang out. We thought they were firecrackers until, uh, I thought they did until the last shot rang out and we heard people screaming. And we rushed over in time to see a policeman standing behind one of the fire poles look, looking around as if to, uh, for some place to shoot, someone to shoot at. Uh, I'd like to remind you here that as the news comes in to the newsroom, we will be on the air. We'll have our eyewitness people here in just a moment. Uh, Vicki, would you see if they need some coffee or something? These people are awfully shaken up. They come awfully close. They were in the line of fire. Jer? I remember, uh, Jay, you said, uh, I thought it was, you know, uh, a uh, firecracker. firecracker or something like that and then they followed one shot and then a uh, second or two later another shot and then another second and a third, and third shot and you said the man's been shot at and we both turned no i said my god that's gunshot that's right no. and then we turned right over we were behind uh, mr uh, Dooley's statue right and we ran over to the uh, uh, right. the cement wall and we saw people beginning to scatter in places and I believe our eyewitness right. was on the ground. Chair, would you do me a favor? Would you go check in the newsroom now and as the men come in from the field or if they have stories, uh, please let me know and also okay. get someone to check with, we were supposed to take the feed from KRLD. They may still be doing a feed from there. Check and let me know. And until our news crew gets back in, we will sort of use this studio uh, as our headquarters. Uh, these people... And you will excuse me, I don't want to interrupt you. I, I'm so sorry because I know that you are so upset, but I would like to talk to you for a minute. It's a little bit awkward, so the camera shots will have to fall as they may. I'm going to stand right here and make somebody put me a chair while we're doing this. May I have your name, please, sir? Bill Newman. And this is Mrs. Newman. Yes, sir. And this is? James Clayton. James, and this is? Billy. Billy, tell me what you saw and what you felt. What happened to you? We were... We had just come from Love Field after seeing the president and the first lady, and we were just in front of the triple underpass on Elm Street, and we were at the edge of the curve. 
getting ready to wave at the president. So you were down, uh, you were down under the viaduct, so to speak, weren't you? Well, we were halfway in between uh, on the grass, circle right. under, underpass. We were at the curb when the incident happened. But the president's car was some 50 feet still yet. Uh, in front of us coming towards us and we heard the first shot and the president, I don't know who was hit first, but the president jumped up in his seat and I thought it scared him. I thought it was a firecracker because he looked, you know, fair. And then as the car got directly in front of us, well, a gunshot apparently from behind us hit the president in the side, side of the temple. Did, did you, do you think the first gunshot came uh, from behind you too? I, I think it came from the same location. I, uh, apparently back up on the... the uh, uh, mall, I don't know, I don't know what you call it. For the benefit of nomenclature, all of you folks have gone out under the viaduct, and as you turn, going under the viaduct on the left-hand side, there's some grass. Uh, do you think the shot came from up on top of the viaduct toward the president? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, not, no, not on the viaduct itself, but up on top of the hill, a little mound of, of ground near the garden. How far away do you, would you say that is from where the president was? Uh, a couple of 300 yards, something like that? Well, I have no idea, because I, I didn't see the, the, where the gunshot come from. Uh, we were looking directly at the president when he was hit. Mm -hmm. And he was more or less directly in front of us, and uh, we didn't realize what happened until we seen the side of his head uh, whenever the bullet hit him in the head. Did you see the blood coming seen the president's head? Yes, sir, we seen that. I seen that. I don't know if my wife did, but I seen that. Oh, you? yes, sir, it was awful. It, it is awful. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. It's what kind of work do you do, sir? I'm a construction worker electrician is this the uh is this the first time that uh, that you have seen a president of the united states did you see when he was here in 1961 no sir uh, no, sir. uh your housewife yes sir took the day off to come downtown and see the president yes sir we did we wanted our children to see it mm -hmm. uh were you in the line of fire i noticed i, re I remember vividly whenever uh, I walked over and looked over the banister there and saw across the street that you were down on the ground uh, so that uh, to keep out of the line of fire. What was the first thought that struck your mind? Oh, I, I thought it was a firecracker, and I saw the blood, and I I had the baby, and I I just ran, and we I got on top of him and laid on the grass. I, I was, it just scared me. It was terrible. Did you see anyone else hit besides the... Uh, I, I'm, uh, Governor Conley was kind of turned to the side and he grabbed his stomach. Okay. I'd like to remind you that this is Jay Watson. I'm speaking to you in the studios of WFAA TV in Dallas. The tape that you just have witnessed was played back approximately 10 minutes on our station uh, after the president was shot this afternoon in Dallas. Uh, the tape of the eyewitness, there were others. Uh, these, the two people, uh, uh, as you could see, we were in a state of confusion there at the moment, but at least uh, we did have the eyewitness report for you in case you have tuned in late. Government sources in Washington say that President Kennedy is dead. He was shot at approximately 12.35 this afternoon in Dallas, Texas. May report this bulletin that a Secret Service agent and a Dallas policeman were shot and killed here today. They were shot some distance from the area where President Kennedy was assassinated. No other information immediately available from there except one more point here that uh, this uh, Secret Service Lieutenant Eric Kaminsky has said the assassin's weapon appears to have been a high-powered army or Japanese rifle of 25 caliber. The entire building where the sniper was located was evacuated. If we could get a picture of our map here and show somewhere of the building, it was a, te it's a Texas school, bo uh, school book depository, me which means exactly what it says. This is the car where the president was this is what we call our triple underpass in Dallas. This is the grassy area where, and it was originally thought that the shots came from him here. And now it's believed that the shots came from this building here. Okay, Sawyer. Your position. Inspector, please. What is the story here now? This is apparently the building that the assassin shot from. This is the building that the witnesses said they had seen a man up there and some with a rifle. And also we found some uh, empty rifle shells on the fifth floor. So he would have been directly above us? Directly above us. Indications were that he had been there for some time. Yes. Well, has the police department taken any precautions uh, against such an incident? We thought we had taken all of the precautions that were necessary. But this is the 
particular building uh, was not covered as were a lot of other buildings. Well, as it stands now, uh, there is a suspect. There were witnesses. There are witnesses who saw the man. What did they see as far as the president and the governor? Well, several witnesses saw him slump over. The president? Yes. And the governor? And the governor, yes. You also understand the Secret Service man was in? This I do not know. I haven't received that information. How many policemen are there in the city of Dallas? We have approximately 1,300. I would assume they're all out right now. Uh, uh. Yes, a uh, bulletin here. Police have arrested a white man in the Riverside section of Fort Worth in connection with the shooting of a Dallas policeman. The man has denied any connection with the assassin assassination of President Kennedy. Of course, there will be a lot of stories coming in like that. Everybody that's picked up here uh, will be in some way or another connected. We do not know at this moment in Dallas, uh, from the latest word we've gotten from our reporters, from the police chief, and from the Sheriff's Department, if any of the people arrested so far are actually the person who pulled the trigger. It seems like that the building, the building that the shot was fired from is a building used by the state of Texas to store school books. Uh, it's an old building, a building that would be hard to cover. It stands over the viaduct as the, I, I guess there are 15 or 20 different places throughout the building that someone could be yes. hiding to take a shot. I don't know of anything uh, I'd like to speak here for the city of Dallas. We are ashamed at the moment. We are stunned. The whole world is stunned, but at this moment I don't think anybody could be more stunned than the people who live in our city. A gentleman just walked in our studio that I am meeting for the first time as well as you. This is WFA-TV in Dallas, Texas. May I have your name, please, sir? My name is Abraham Zapruder. Mr. Zapruder? Zapruder, yes, sir. Zapruder. And would you tell us your story, please, sir? I got out in, uh, about a half hour earlier and get to a good spot to shoot some pictures. And I found a spot, one of these uh, concrete blocks that I have down near that park near the underpass. And I got on top there, there was another girl from my office, she was right behind me. And as I was shooting, as the president was coming down from Houston Street making his turn, it was about halfway down there, I had a shot. And he slumped to the side, like this. Then I had another shot or two, I couldn't say it was one or two. And I saw his head practically open up, all blood and everything, and I kept on shooting. That's about all. I'm just sick. I can't. I think that pretty well expresses the entire yeah. feelings of the whole world. Terrible. You have the film in your camera. We'll try yes, to I get... brought it on the studio. Now. We'll try to get that processed and have it as soon as possible. Right now, we have videotape. Uh, a picture of the building of where the uh, bullet came from. Let's take the picture first, then the videotape. Oh, this is videotape now. This is a picture of the Hearst leaving... Uh, Parkland Hospital with President Kennedy's body. As I understand it, uh, the body is being taken to one of the funeral homes here in Dallas. All right, that, Bob, that pretty well covers it, I think. This is the same hospital that President Kennedy visited in his visit here in 1961. It is not? Excuse me. He went, this is the outside shot of the hospital and the people who are gathered there. All stunned in the realization that President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas today. Now we have a picture of the building There's a picture of the building that one of the boys took showing uh, possibly one of the windows that, the, that, the, uh, that was used. The top right hand. Okay, which one, which one was it? Uh, let's see if we can figure it out. There it is. There is a picture of the window where the gun was uh, allegedly fired from that killed President Kennedy today. Excuse me, go ahead, sir. 
I said, I must have been the line of fire. I see now the picture where I was. I was right on that uh, concrete block, as I said. And as I explained before, as a sickening scene. At first, I thought perhaps it's a. Uh, it sounded like uh, somebody make a joke. You hear a, a shot and somebody grabs their stomach. I was about 100 yards away from uh, one of our other. The boy and I walked over to see President Kennedy. We were about 100 yards away, and it sounded like there were three shots. And after the first couple, I said, uh, uh, My God, uh, they've shot the president. And then we walked over and looked down and could see the people on the grass there. And I imagine you were one of the people that we saw there mm -hmm. uh, was, underneath was, uh, the viaduct. This, um, uh, this happened this afternoon about, uh, what time, 12.35, the president died. Something, in, something like it. The right president died 12. at 1 o'clock. They sounded like, uh, at first they sounded like firecrackers and somebody <clears throat> next to us said they're shooting off fireworks. But then we realized, uh, it didn't take but a minute to realize that they were... Uh, loud reports, and for those of you who are familiar with hearing a rifle shot, it was uh, the recognizable sound. Now, Jim, the uh, Dallas Sheriff's Department has found a rifle on the fifth floor staircase of that building you just saw in the picture, the uh, uh, book storage place. It's a 7.65 Mauser, German-made army rifle, telescopic sight, and one shell left in the chamber. Three spent shells have been found nearby, and apparently they're hooking this as the, as the murder weapon. President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas t today despite the most elaborate precautions taken by his Secret Service bodyguards. The agents had checked into all aspects of the president's visit, the food he would eat, the roads he would travel, the buildings he would enter, even the flowers that he would smell. The Secret Service men were reluctant about permitting the president to speak in the Dallas trademark because of the tiers of balconies overlooking the main court there, giving a potential assassin a good opportunity to hide, then shoot down when the president did appear. The president went ahead anyway. A list of known agitators in Dallas, anyone who might conceivably stir up trouble, was obtained from local lawmen. The Secret Service men made themselves familiar with these persons and their patterns, but they missed one man, the assassin. The motorcade route was thoroughly checked out. Trouble spots were noted, particularly where traffic or crowd conditions might get out of hand. It is the motorcade, above all, that the Secret Service men worry about most. Chief executives riding in open cars down crowded streets are extremely vulnerable as targets for assassination. But agents point out that it is impossible to check every occupant entering parade route buildings on the day of a motorcade, and this, in effect, is what happened. One man holed up in one building along a long motorcade route with a rifle and a telescopic sight. He was as hard to find or to spot as the proverbial needle in a haystack. He shot to kill, he shot with deadly accuracy. Using a bolt-action rifle, he fired three bullets unusually swiftly, as if he had trained for this murder for a long time. One bullet hit the president's head, another bullet seriously wounded Texas Governor John Conley. More from Dallas now as we join our ABC affiliate there, WFAA-TV and Jay Watson. Bill Lord has been at the police station for the last four or five hours, right? Bill? Good estimate, yes. Tell us what's happening down there, will you? Well, I got to the police station about uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. There were about uh, 20 newsmen there at the time. Uh, two hours later, there were over 200 newsmen. And this gives you an idea as to just what the scene was this afternoon in the police station. In a moment, you'll see the suspect, Lee Oswald, come out, and we'll ask him some questions. Uh, it was a very uh, almost riotous scene uh, in the police station as uh, the press was fighting each other trying to get here. Here's a representation of the Secret Service Bureau of Police officers have not allowed me to, to have any. I, uh, I don't know what this is all about. Kill the president? No, sir, I didn't. People keep asking. Sir, uh, people keep asking that, but I knew nothing about it at all. Uh, Paul Good is at uh, police headquarters, and he just phoned in saying that the police chief said they are sure they have the right man that he is not cracking yet under the uh, intensive questioning. So he's been holding up uh, how many hours now has he been interrogated by the police department? Mm. About four or five, six hours somewhere. Close to six hours. Uh, 
Uh, Bill, where were you? Tell us about uh, where you were in Dallas today and what the reaction was. Well, I was I was here in Dallas today, uh, right here in the studios. We had been planning uh, extensive coverage of the president's trip to Texas, and uh, I just been looking at some of the tape fed in from the airport on uh, Dallas's welcoming of the president, which was uh, very warm to say the least. And we heard about it. We ran over to. Uh, the uh, sheriff's office, which is right near the spot. In fact, it's only a block away yes. from where the president was assassinated. And uh, everyone we talked to couldn't believe that this had happened. Yet, uh, it had, and uh, the sheriff, uh, all were uh, very disturbed that this had happened in Dallas. That it didn't happen at all. Did, were you uh, at the police station long enough? Did you see the suspect long enough to get an impression of what he was like? Did you feel like that the man was uh, possibly a deranged? Did he act, you know, foul side of it? This would be difficult to uh, estimate because we only saw him, uh, we did see him about four times, uh, a scene like that repeated over and over again as they bring him down from the city jail to, to be uh, looked at by uh, people who witnessed the assassination. Was he by himself? Does he have family with him? Or? His wife? is there. His wife uh, is a Russian-born, now American citizen. She speaks nothing but Russian, and they were having difficulty uh, interrogating her. His face was all bruised up, and uh, police indicated that this occurred when he uh, tried to fight off uh, arresting policemen of the theater yeah, after, he had shot, after he had shot uh, patrolman uh, Tippett. And he has been charged for murder of Patrolman Tippett. And sources at uh, the police station expect that before midnight or certainly before sunrise, if they have any additional uh, uh, positive clues, then he will be charged with murder of the president. Let's see, what about the police departments? You were talking with them and visiting with them. What is their attitude about the assassination? Uh, is there, you know, the feeling of dejection? Did you have any personal comments or angles from any of the policemen? I spoke to uh, several and... Uh, all they said was, uh, we gave uh, the Secret Service more men than they asked for. And no matter how many men we gave them, uh, we couldn't possibly prevent a uh, crackpot from uh, taking the shot that he did. It's impossible. Isn't it? Impossible. The evidence, both real and circumstantial, seems to be overwhelming against Lee Harvey Oswald at this moment. There is no doubt that he'll stand trial for the murder of the policeman and possibly for the, pres from the President of the United States as well. And in New York City, the heart of it, Times Square, ABC's Jules Bergman for this report. Normally, Times Square at this hour would be packed with tens of thousands of the after-theater crowd. Tonight at this hour, it's almost empty. This city is a portrait in sadness. The feeling here is almost as if it were doomsday. Tens of thousands of people milling about in distraught confusion have now drifted homeward in sadness. Sadness and grief and anger are all mixed here in a darkened Times Square and in the hearts of those who are still here. The only real lights are the aircraft beacons, almost indiscernible from the Empire State Building, and the headlights of autos and buses as they pass our cameras here. Theaters closed, even movies closed, marquees darken. Cars and buses still roar by, but traffic is lighter than usual, though crowds up to now have been heavier. There is a sense of loss. People are wandering the streets, police told us, confused and searching. Hotel lobbies have been empty, and restaurants almost deserted all evening long. It's like the night before the world came to an end. People are neither excited nor complacent. They are so stunned as to be almost left without emotions here. You don't begin to realize what the president was in the hearts of these people, what he stood for as a man and as a symbol until he is gone. That's the message we gather from this crowd here in Times Square. We should all go home, one young man told us. We should go home to find ourselves, to discover where we are and what we must now do. As with any great loss, New Yorkers here are seeking to find themselves, to recover. New York tonight is a city stunned, a city searching for itself, even as our entire nation is searching for itself. All caused by one psychotic with a $29 surplus rifle and a 10-cent cartridge. This is Jules Bergman, ABC, reporting from Times Square in New York.